Hey guys, Super Action Guy here. Good morning. Today we are going to cover a different kind of review for my channel. I have been seeing a lot of reviews on this shoe, the Solomon XA Pro 3D Gore-Tex, and I've seen reviews on the Adidas Swift R2 Gore-Tex. But if you're like me and you're trying to figure out which one is the right one for you, uh, maybe this video will help you make some uh, decisions one way or the other. So without further ado, let me dive into this and we'll do a quick comparison. Okay, so first up we'll take a look at the Solomon. This is the Solomon XA Pro 3D. Um, I'm going to try and hit some of the high points of the shoe, some of the low points, just all around what I think of it. Um, brand new out of the box. I've worn them around the house for maybe a few hours. Haven't really taken them outside or put any trail hour running on. But uh, this will at least give you an idea. Um, these are about $160 and you can search Amazon.com or anywhere else to find them. Uh, it's a great shoe. Um, we'll go over weight, uh, Gore-Tex, the traction, the fit, and the lacing system. Um, so first and foremost, um, let's just get the weight out of the way because people are always trying to compare that. So I do have a official US Postal Service scale here and let me tear that and we will weigh this shoe versus the Adidas so right off the bat you're looking at about 13.1 ounces let's just do it one more time here about 13.1 ounces for the Solomon shoe um, and then right off the bat in case you only have a few minutes to watch this video the Adidas Swift R2 Gore-Tex is about 13.6 so very close uh, not a whole lot of difference there in terms of weight per shoe but I know that was one of the things that I was trying to figure out when I bought these is one of these gonna be heavier than the other um, so let's keep going okay so the Solomon uh, first and foremost color choices um, you have three color choices you have a black you have this navy and then you have a greenish uh, kind of an amalgam of greens um, I went with the navy I just thought it was a more universal color that kind of had a little bit more punch and pizzazz to it than the black. Um, does have the Gore-Tex logo on the side here. It is the Gore-Tex fabric as well as the Gore-Tex lining inside. It has an ortho light insert, which actually isn't that bad. I have um, not a very good arch in my foot. And this actually did provide some arch support for me, which was uh, pleasant. The lacing system on the Solomon, uh, their quick lace system is actually pretty amazing. Um, it ties down here and it just keeps looping all the way up through it's a it's one basically piece that's connected in the middle here and when you pull that I mean it cinches that whole thing all the way up uh, which is a really cool feature the adidas you have to do a little bit more finagling with um, I have to kind of pull on each lace and you'll see what that looks like but it's not the end of the world uh, adidas did a decent job I just think that Solomon's done a little bit more work on this and they've kind of refined it a little bit better um, fit I wear a size 8 by the way for the caveat for the weights and for everything else not a super uh, big shoe size by any means but um, and my heel uh, in this shoe my heel tends to slip back here in this cup and I know other reviewers have said this thing is pretty um, tight fitting it's pretty narrow um, I don't have like wide feet I wouldn't say so I can't comment about the toe box I had plenty of room in the toe box but the heel area here, especially in the right shoe, I just had a, you know, every time I stepped, there'd be a slight slip there. So your mileage may vary. Um, not terrible, but I will tell you the Adidas Swift R2 held the back of my heel in a lot better than the Solomon. So um, that's one thing to consider if you have narrower feet. Um, just something to think about. This is a 3D chassis. I don't really know all the science behind it, but I think it's one solid piece that goes all the way around. Um, it felt great right out of the box. I know a lot of people were worried about uh, fit and um, comfort. Uh, this actually felt really good right out of the box. The Ortholite inserts are not that bad. Um, I, I, you know, I'm sometimes I'm, especially with dress shoes, like when you're wearing those to work, those can be pretty hard uh, on your feet. So I generally have to wear an insert, but with these, I wouldn't feel like I would need to. Um, the Gore-Tex lining is really nice. That was, you know, what that was one of the features I wanted when I looked at a shoe. I wanted a quick lace system. I wanted the Gore-Tex, and I wanted something that was um, sort of lighter weight, like a more of a running shoe to give me a better cushion. So uh, those few things, both of these shoes did a great job of satisfying. Um, it just comes down to I think preference, but more importantly, 
uh, fit. And in this case, um, you know, we'll go into the Adidas here next, but the fit just felt a little better. So tread wise, uh, this is the Conti grip. Um, didn't really, again, I, I can't attest to its performance outside. I'm just trying to figure out which one to keep right now in the break-in process. This one does seem like it grips pretty well. Um, on the tile floors in my house, you know, I was kind of able to pivot and shift uh, with this thing kind of grabbing and biting pretty well. Um, of the two, I think that the Continental rubber on the Adidas is a little grippier, but that could just be personal preference again. So um, the shoes themselves, comparatively side by side now, we'll go and switch into the uh, Adidas Terex. Um, they're both, you know, comparable. I mean, it's, it comes down to price in, in this case or fitment if, if you're looking at different kinds of fit. They're both Gore-Tex. They both have the, this has the ripstop lining. They both have like the TPU membrane and the toe protector up here. Um, they're both about 11 and a half inches long for a size eight uh, from tip of toe to back of heel. Um, so let's just cover some of the basics here now on the Adidas colors. Um, this comes in, I think, two or three colors, I believe, three colors for 2019. They've had some other colors in the past. Um, I went with the gray, black, and orange. I just thought it was kind of a cool color combination. Um, all black shoes are great. Um, you know, a lot of people go with them, but I just like something with a little bit more punch and pizzazz if I'm going to wear it. So Gore-Tex, again, all the way through the Gore-Tex lining. It has just a, I don't know, it doesn't really call out what the insole is in this shoe. It just says Adidas Terex, but it's not bad. Um, I don't think it has the same level of arch support here that the... Solomon does, but that doesn't mean that it was terrible. It felt, in all honesty, this shoe felt a little bit more comfortable on my heel. Uh, it felt a little bit more comfortable throughout the length of the cushion as well in the shoe. Toe box was probably about the same, so I didn't have any issues here. I don't really have very wide feet, but this did hold my heel in very well versus the Solomon where I had some slip. I did not have any slip here. So, Something to consider if maybe you know that your feet run a little bit narrower um, to take that into account. Um, aesthetics, you know, it looks nice. I think they did a nice job with the design. The pull lace system. If you remember seeing on the Solomon, the pull lace on that, with one pull, you're essentially able to tighten all laces. With this system, it's a little bit different. It runs uh, kind of parallel through, or it runs um, singularly through this point, whereas on the Solomon, it terminates here. So that when you do pull this, it binds the top first, whereas on the Solomon, it binds all the laces at the same time. So that's why I comment on that because it is a little bit different. Solomon's quick lace system is a little bit um, better engineered, I guess. They just have more experience, more time with it. Adidas hasn't done a bad job by any means. But what I found myself having to do here was kind of pulling each individual section and then cinching the top down here just to get the right, um, the right fit. Um, it does hold your foot in. It does feel good. It, it feels secure throughout the whole area here. Um, I never felt loose or, or sloppy in there. They don't have a tongue tuck away like Solomon. They give you a, an elastic tab here. Um, it's personal preference. I actually kind of like this because it just seems like it's quicker for me to lift this up, throw this underneath it, than it is to try and shove it up into the tongue. Um, it does have a full tongue. Both of them do. They're enclosed, I think, as you get further down in there. Uh, so debris ingestion would be minimal because um, they do have the ripstop fabric in both cases. Um, fitment, again, like I said, I already commented on that. The traction on this one, the grip. This uses, the, this uses continental rubber. Now, you know, what that really means, I don't know. It's probably a proprietary elastomer formula that Adidas licensed from Continental through their logo on the bottom. It looks cool. and Nobody's ever going to see it, um, but it does look cool. You know, I like the fact that you get a little bit, uh, there's probably a little bit more science and a little bit more chemistry and engineering uh, that went into the sole of this shoe than the Solomon, but I'm not a chemical engineer, so I can't comment it specifically. But uh, from an elastomer perspective, from the rubber perspective on the bottom here, um, it grips. This, I think, grips really well. I think it just bite a bit harder on the tile floors in our house, and it kind of provided me a little bit more stopping power or pivoting power or launch power than the Conti grip. Not by much. 
Uh, it's again subjective, but just something to consider. Their tread patterns, their lug patterns are slightly different. Um, one uses, you know, more of a, a, a linear system in parallel here where you have more of a linear base lug. Um, the Adidas shoe, I think, has gone for a more offset kind of uh, lug pattern. So, again, I don't know. I don't know what it means if you're on wet pavement. I would think that both of these on wet rock or any kind of wet, loose soil would be great. Um, I think that's where we're at. So of the two, for me personally, I, 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 I liked the Solomons. I want, I wanted the Solomons. Um, but you have to put, in my opinion, you have to prioritize fit over aesthetics or looks. Um, I think they're both great. I, I actually like both shoes. If I, if I will, I, I will keep both of them and just Okay, that cut out of me here. Let's try this again. But um, in conclusion, I just want to say, you know, hopefully this video does a decent job of trying to compare the two of these shoes together to give you an idea of what their pros are, what their cons are, uh, what their differences are. Um, I know that from other reviews, they're both excellent trail shoes. They've both gotten excellent uh, reviews from guys that are out there putting a lot of miles on a week, uh, 60 plus miles. In some cases, I've heard some of these reviewers that are putting you know, 60 plus miles on a week on these things, just from walking or running. So, um, you know, there's a lot going on with these. I think there's a lot of work that went into making these shoes as best as they can be. And uh, I'm, I'm impressed with both of them. I think that they're both good shoes. Um, you know, it's one of those, it comes down to personal preference, fitment, and what are you looking for in the shoe? How important is the quick lace system between the two? How important is the uh, rubber? And then if you have a brand preference, obviously that comes into play as well. So I hope you guys liked this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. I've got a lot of goofy videos on there that I do uh, for my kids, for other people's kids, just for my own pleasure to keep my sanity in a crazy world we live in now. And uh, don't forget to comment down below. Uh, if you own these shoes, if you have uh, thoughts or comments on either of these two brands, uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from the community out there who runs with these regularly or uses them, uh, just for my own knowledge. So thanks a lot, guys. Hope this review is helpful. We'll see you again.